You've answered the second part of this question, but somebody wants to know if you would ever go back to the brand or go back to managing, which you've already answered the managing part a minute uh, ago. No, I can't manage. That's just not an option. <laughs> Unless they decide to make me uh, Chief Robert Ironside and I do all my shows in a wheelchair, and uh, which I don't think would be all that entertaining. Uh, I really would not mind doing commentary for a legit, reputable company. I need to see uh, what Al Snow's uh, devotion is. I was told he was going to gut OVW. It needs to be gutted. It really does. And, <laughs> and um, you know, Daniel Spencer must not have thought it was a big, uh, a.k.a. Spider. He must not have thought it was a big secret. He, he put it out on Facebook Live uh, last night. So I don't guess Al wanted it to be a secret. I'm sure he would have told Spider, hey, don't say anything until I talk to Bowen. But, um and Chris even answered the question for him. He says, dad ain't going to do that as long as Gilbert Corsi's there. And Chris would not manage there as long as Gilbert Corsi's there. And especially if he had any say over us, that fucking shit ain't going to happen. Uh, but I don't even want him there. I just don't like him. He, he's, a, he's a negative addition to the show. He's negative to the boys. The top talent mostly has left because of him. And there's others that just want to be on TV and don't give a fuck if he's there and don't realize he don't know anything. <clears throat> so, um, and, uh, he doesn't get paid. He doesn't get a dime. He doesn't have merch to sell. He just thinks one day the WWE is going to call him up. He told me this about two or three years ago at a pizza hut, the same one Chris is at tonight. And he really thinks that he's talented enough that WWE. And, and as you all know, that is a favor job. That is a favor job. And he thinks he's going to get that job one day. He's been down here. I mean, guys, I retired five or six years ago. He'd been there for two, three, four years then, but yet he still thinks the WWE who is not real thrilled with OVW that we have a lot of guys go up here and try out and they get told, well, when you get the stink of OVW off from you, come back again in a year or two. Um, trust me, Gilbert Corsi is not getting no job in the WWE. I think he got to do something with TNA big shit. Um, Jason Marshall could go down there tomorrow with his resume blank and <laughs> get a job over a lot of them down here. So. Yeah, this, this is my experience. <laughs> You're perfect. You don't know shit. So, I got a couple of questions. People wanting that. to know what you think about Taker and Y2J in the uh, upcoming Rumble. Excuse me? What do you think about The Undertaker and uh, Chris Jericho being in the upcoming Rumble in Saudi Arabia? Oh, they're going to be in that? Yeah. Bad idea. Um, it's okay for Jericho. Uh, but Taker's proved he's got no business being in there. Um, he, he came back for his once every other year, uh, um, uh, amusement view. And, uh, but then again, I guess if you want to make sure that thing's going to sell out over there. Oh, I uh, guess they're having a casket match. I, uh, I didn't know that last time I checked casket match with who that was just with Rusev, but that must've been changed and I didn't, uh, they're going to have a casket match with the comedian that actually got the biggest pop on WrestleMania. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, they turned their legit badass into a goddamn comedian. Because you know, I, I know you they have been on your shows twice a week. They had Rusev in there with the uh, undertaker in a casket match. And I thought, Jesus Christ, man, they, they're really just shitting all over Rusev. Had me in there with a goddamn casket match. Uh, no, they, they've turned him into a comedian. And, uh, I mean, but, but he got the biggest pop on mania because the marks like the Rusev day shit. I don't, that's not what I would do with him. I mean, I put comedy on the guys who can't do anything else that happen to be good at comedy. Um, I got next to no use forever for Sammy Zane. Sammy lane is what I call him. And Kevin Oinkins needs to consider getting in some kind of shape. I was a fat manager for a reason. I had no desire to be an in-shape wrestler and take bumps five nights a week. I had no desire. I was 212-0 and 0 at Oldham County High as an amateur wrestler. I was very good at it. And uh, Jimmy said one reason that he didn't go to bat for me to be in um, a lot of wrestling companies early on is he didn't think I'd put anybody over. He thought that if I could out-wrestle them and that I could pin them, and he knew I could, <clears throat> that I wouldn't, that I ain't going to lose. You, know, you can book whatever you want but I'm going to win. And a lot of the guys on the Memphis roster, then I could have beaten easily. And that includes Jerry Lawler because Jerry Lawler does not know the shit that I know or what Chris knows. Chris is an excellent fucking shoot fighter as well. And uh, I mean, I was 212 and over a reason. I never lost a fight in high school. Uh, now I'm 58 years old, very fat. And, um, 
but I made it clear in the in the locker room, <clears throat> the character that's outside, uh, that that's out on television is not the guy in the locker room. So don't think you're going to fuck with me the way y'all fuck with the guy out there. And there, there was one guy that tried to do it. He he, uh, I was trying to leave the building, and he told me I had to go through him. I'll save his name because he don't matter anyway. No no one gave a shit about him, and he ended up fading away. Uh, but it was back during the early days of the WWE contract era, and so I'm trying to leave. And he thinks he's going to get over in the locker room by preventing me from leaving the locker room. Cause I always got to leave early. I'd manage my match and I could go home. <clears throat> the contract guys had to stay there and get critiqued and bullshitted and all that. So, you know, we're only halfway through the show, but my bit's over. I can go home. I'm not doing commentary yet. So I've got my briefcase and I'm trying to head out the door and he stands in front of me and, and he says, uh, you got to go through me to get out. I'm looking at him. I start grinning at him. I, I said, uh, so, so how do, how are we going to do this? I said, because I am going out that door. I said, and we've got about 30 people back here watching us. Do you realize what a fucking idiot you're going to look like if I do go through you and go out that door? you got nothing to gain here. Because if I don't, well, you're the big tough wrestler. I said, so please tell me what you got to gain out of this. Like I said, Bowling, you ain't, you ain't leaving here unless you go through me. So he lowers his shoulder, and he he, he wants me to bump shoulders with him. And I'm going, you got to be a fucking idiot. And I said, if you only knew what my balance level was and how much force I've got compared to your goofy ass. So he takes a step and comes at me. I take a step and come at him. Jason, he got wiped out and knocked on his fucking ass. And and, and he, he actually knocked the breath out of him. So he's laying in the floor and all 30 wrestlers just pop like a bitch because none of them liked him anyway. And so he's laying on his fucking back with that long hair and he used to wear a thong over his tights. And uh, there he lays. And I looked at him. And I said, I'll see you next week, bitch. And then I walked out the door. So I got over in the locker room for knocking him on his ass. And I think about three weeks later, he was gone. They rode him out. And, yeah, the goddamn fat manager put you on your ass. What rustler are you going to fucking beat, motherfucker? And uh, but I, I, I don't know what he thought he had to gain out of it. And uh, Ron Waterman hit me once. The, the boys were trying to fuck with me, and they wanted Waterman to really knock my ass out during during the show. Danny would have had a cow if he knew they had set that up, but Waterman didn't really want to be in on it. He, he, you know, I'm not going to fucking hurt Bowling. Bowling ain't done nothing to me. So he hit me with about a third of what he had, and I swear to God, it's the hardest I've ever been hit in my life. I had to go in the back and get a can of Coke and put it in my eye. And thank God we had a can, cold can of Coke back there. My eye would have been black as a bitch. He comes back, man, I'm sorry. The boys are wanting me to fuck with you, and I didn't want to hit you. And because uh, I knew, you know, the, the, I know it was supposed to be a working punch, and I tried to work it. I said, well, you suck at it. And um, I said, what did you hit me with? I said, on a one to 10, I got you with about three. I said, motherfucker. I said, goddamn, as hard as I've ever been hit in my life, and you hit me with a three? <laughs> Shit, save them goddamn tens, boy. But now me and Waterman have been dear friends, and, and he was trying to get over with the boys. So. <clears throat> but he really didn't because his 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 job was to knock me out. But had he done it, Danny Davis might have fired him because it, it was done during a television show, and you, you don't fuck with television. Uh, but he listened to some stupid fucks, Conway and Densmore and people like that, that were trying to uh, get over. And there was one other time that, um, and I can't remember if it was Waterman or who it was, but uh, might have been Bobby Lashley. I can't remember. <clears throat> but the, the deal was I was supposed to hold the wrestler and then Rob Conway was going to come and the wrestler was supposed to get punched and that we were going to win the match that way. But they wanted to switch it and have the wrestler duck and Conway was going to knock the shit out of me because me, me and Conway had issues back then. And so Conway's charging and the wrestler tries to get away and he can't. And they actually had to hit the fucking wrestler instead of me, uh, which was against everything they were doing. So they start yelling at him. And like I said, I, it might even been Waterman. I think it was Waterman. I think that's what led to me getting the hit in the eye because their first plan didn't work. And Waterman says, I gave it everything I had. I couldn't get away from that motherfucker. He says, I did everything I could. He had me, man. I couldn't go. And I was, no, no, if I got a hold of you, uh, you might be Ron Waterman, but I ain't getting hit in the fucking head. Not with these, but Conway, he was weak. He, he wouldn't hurt nobody, so.